Hi, I'm Katie Linendahl. I am a consumer technology expert. You may have seen me on your airwaves from the likes of the Today Show, the Weather Channel, or Rachel Ray, showcasing the latest and greatest gadgets. But also, I am a huge adventure junkie, and I am known for chasing awesome tech stories across the globe, whether it be in Bermuda or Kenya or Iceland. I love to take my production company out and just really capture some amazing stories. And recently, I had the chance to attend a Canon workshop in Fairbanks, Alaska, that was specifically focused on photographing the Northern Lights. Whoa! Now I have to tell you, I am not a photographer. I shoot some video on location with my team and a lot of underwater video, but shooting something like the Northern Lights, this was a huge challenge for me, so I was pretty pumped. Coming back from this experience, I wanted to share everything that I learned, so I'm going to go over a number of things in this video, which include camera body and settings. I'm going to give you some quick tips and tricks there. Lighting, which is absolutely critical. Location, I'm going to share with you a few spots that I actually discovered in Fairbanks, thanks to the help of the Canon experts. Aurora selfies, getting video of the Auroras, lots of new technology out there that is accessible to capturing great video. Gear for cold weather, and also apps and websites that will keep you on top of the northern lights. So. Let's do this. Pretty awesome video coming up on all things Northern Lights, whether you're interested in learning more about how to photograph them or just how to stay warm while you're out there chasing them. One thing I think is very important to address right off the top is what you're seeing through the camera lens is different than what you see through the human eye. Now, this is not to downgrade the experience of what you're seeing of the Northern Lights, but just the brilliance of what is captured through the camera is just next level. And once you get the settings down, and I'm going to give you the, the tr perfect trifecta to start with, once you get those settings down, I say keep snapping, keep snapping, because no two shots will be alike. Literally, I walked out of this workshop having hundreds of photographs to choose from. It's really hard to narrow down. So here's the deal. Trifecta for capturing the lights. Now, you can play around with these settings, but this is a great starting point. ISO, start at 6400. Shutter speed, three seconds. Aperture your f-stop, 2.8. These numbers will not fail you. And again, feel free to go up and down from there. In terms of the lens, you want that wide angle lens, something from a 14 to a 24 millimeter. I personally, I played with a lot of lenses while I was out there. The 14 ended up being my go-to baby. Can't go wrong with it. Again, getting that, four, that huge landscape and really capturing the full on Northern Lights. And maybe most importantly, what I was filming with was a Canon 5D Mark IV. I had a really great experience using this camera. Now, one thing that I was trying to do that many others weren't focused on was putting a subject in my shot. So now that obviously changes things because you have somebody right in your foreground. Well, what I was discovering is the focusing problem and you really have to have that secondary light source, whether it's a flashlight or if you do, in the, the cases of a few nights we were out there, we had a really great half moon that lit the area pretty nice. First off, it was fun trying to get Aurora selfies. I was trying to be the expert in that realm at the workshop. It's very challenging. Oftentimes you're gonna set the timer and then you're gonna have a blurry shot. One thing I did discover with trial and error is my love for a good silhouette shot, as you can see in these photos of my sister and I. And looking off to the auroras with that subject in the foreground, it's very easy to obtain. And if you really want that portrait shot, we'll have your friend take that shot for you. In this case, as a perfect example, uh, Eric Stoner, who is a phenomenal photographer, he took this awesome shot of myself and then one with me and my sister. And again, what he used in terms of the settings, three second shutter speed, 2.8 aperture, ISO 6400. He shined a flashlight on us to actually get into specific focus. And then also we had this amazing half moon that was just lighting the area so perfectly. So it's very cold, it's hard to be tactile, but you wanna make sure that you are getting in perfect focus. And also the other challenge is, when you are putting this on, you know, a three second shutter speed, you have to remain perfectly still. My sister is known for blinking. And it was really challenging because a lot of the shots, there was movement. So you have to stay very still when you're in terms of getting the perfect shot. All right, I wanna dive into lighting because this was critical when it came to photographing the Northern Lights. And allow me to explain because this kind of moves into a number of different areas when it comes to specific lighting. First, 
when you are with a group or you're pulled over on the side of the road and there's other cars zipping through, those lights that are gonna start to be in your shot, especially when you have a long exposure, are gonna manipulate that photograph incredibly. And oftentimes it was, it was a bit of a hinder because uh, cars would be coming into frame. Now that is on the flip side, if you wanna go positive, it could actually make for a really unique and dynamic shot. But even the smallest amount of light that's entering your shot from an alternate source is going to manipulate and change the photo. And I'll go as far as to say, I'm gonna be covering cold gear in this video and, and some of my favorite cold gear accessories, but we had heated gloves on and we had touch button technology so you could press it to turn it on. Now those of course we kept on often. If we were in any shots, as I noted, I was trying to take um, subject shots where this, we were in the picture and the auroras were behind us. That little light from the gloves or the light from my coat, I have a heated jacket, which I'll talk about, that can just change the photo drastically. So I want you to be very aware of that. And also a lot of people were experiencing even on the back of their camera, if you have that little red light, you might wanna put some gaffer tape over that because again, tiniest amount of light source can make the biggest difference. As a quick aside, I think it's worth addressing, well, amazing auroras are out. Beautiful, I'm gonna get a picture on my smartphone. You're gonna be incredibly frustrated because a smartphone, a great iPhone, I know it's a great gadget, there's a lot of technology in there. It will come not even close, actually won't even get anything in terms of output on your smartphone. So you really need a really good quality body of DSLR. And the better the DSLR, the better the sensor inside, the better the shot, and the better your expectations can be. So let's dive into location because this is one of the key elements you need, obviously, for seeing the auroras. And I have to tell you, I have been to Iceland so many times and only once did I catch a little glimmer of the Northern Lights, but Fairbanks, Alaska, oh baby, let's talk numbers because they are claiming about 243 days a year you can catch the Aurora Borealis, which is phenomenal. And for the sake of this video, I don't know when you're watching it. Our Canon workshop that we attended was March 23rd to the 27th every single night we were there we caught them and it wasn't just for a minute it wasn't a blip they were out for hours and they were dancing i mean it is unlike anything you have ever seen before so i would even say just by that experience alone and this was in 2018 for anybody watching this video it's worth going to that particular location and the, the different colors we saw every night the different way in which they moved Every night was different, but I wanna give you specific locations as to where we were exactly, because one thing I will note is when we had pulled over in these little side areas, we would go about a mile out sometimes and the lights weren't there. And they were so impactful, you would often think that they'd be blanketing the entire city sky, but that wasn't the case. Now there were nights where we even did see them in the city where there was a lot of light pollution from the city. So there were, um, you know, anomalies, but really having these little secret spots were key. And I will tell you my favorite spot in all of Fairbanks, Alaska was really on the outskirts of Fox, Alaska. And it was located right next to Ski Land. And actually, if you want some amenities, if you don't wanna to have to use the restroom in the good old woods, you can actually book a spot at Ski Land and have access to restrooms and facilities and set up shop right there. So that's something that we did not do, but it would be a really awesome option. The amount of cameras I know that can capture the auroras in terms of video, I think you can count on one hand and this technology is just getting better and better. But speaking from a personal experience, the camera that we used, and my friend Jade, who is an associate producer at the Weather Channel, she was so pumped to get hands on with a C300 and you get to see some of these videos that she took. The time lapses were remarkable and I highly recommend C300, you can get this for a rental, probably in any good camera shop that you have out there. Worth the investment even to just rent for a few days if you are going to, and hopeful to get video of the Northern Lights. So at the particular time we were filming in Alaska, the sun set around eight, we would be out by nine. And the fun part about it is, hope you got some stories to tell because we were out for hours, oftentimes till about three, four in the morning. What was an interesting aside is every single night the lights came out at 1 a.m. Like, bing, 
so that was pretty cool. But it's so cold, and I'm a cold weather girl through and through. I grew up in Erie, Pennsylvania, which had like the most snowfall for 2017, so I don't want to hear it in terms of being like, oh, you're a wuss. No, I can tough it out in some serious cold weather. But I want to make some recommendations in terms of cold weather gear. I test a lot of consumer products, and when it comes to cold weather gear, I feel like I've gotten very hands-on with the best of the best. So. Let me make some recommendations. Ladies, you're gonna wanna be in three layers on the bottoms because get those fleece tights, those are huge. And then in terms of ones to put over, I love Oros in terms of their ladies' pants. Also, Arcteryx makes a great top layer. So you wanna make sure you have tons of layers on. Oros is a company that is a go-to for me in terms of cold weather gear. They often rely on space technology to warm a lot of their materials. And Oros, they make an awesome jacket. I also like My Core Control. They make a heated jacket with three different settings. That's the one that I took to Alaska. I know it's hard to pack lots of layers, but if you're taking one jacket, either the Oros or the My Core Control with heated settings, charge it up before you go, make sure it's all juiced up and can't fail you in terms of keeping you warm throughout the night. Hemmaker's heated scarf with three different temperature settings is a great must have for any cold weather environment. Heated packs, those little ones that you can get at any convenience store, any drugstore, load up on those and little tip there. You have to kind of break them up a little bit before you're actually headed on location so they get warm by the time you get there. Lots of people were shoving them in their hats. One of my best purchases this trip was a heated headband that you could actually stick the hot packs right inside. And that baby kept me warm for hours. Really good, inexpensive investment. If you're looking for an awesome trapper hat, I love the one from 66 Degrees North. I picked that up on a trip to Iceland. A new gadget that I was testing that I really liked were these heated gloves from Cirrus. Now obviously when you're photographing and you're working with a lot of gear, I was running back and forth to the car and downloading stuff, making sure that my images were exactly how I liked them. You gotta be very tactile. Heated gloves from Cirrus, specifically these ones called Hyperlite, allowed me to really have the movement that I needed. And what I liked about them is they're three different temperature settings and they never got too, too hot. They are expensive, but I think they're worth the investment. And last but certainly not least, in terms of websites and apps, all of the Canon experts were turning to solarham.com. So strictly on their recommendation and their use, I think that it is the best option. Here are two app options, My Aurora Forecast and Alerts, which is gonna show you the best locations in real time and also give you the percentage of potentially catching the lights based on your current location and a little gallery of pretty amazing photos. Also, Aurora Forecast. This, per the name, is gonna show you the global Aurora Forecast, provide predictions, and also if you opt for the Pro model, you can get push notifications. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope you learned at least one thing new and I hope to be sharing many more of my adventures. I am on the road about 250 days a year. It's a true blessing and I hope to be posting more longer form content here on YouTube. As you know, it takes a lot of time, effort, and editing, so I do certainly appreciate you hitting the like button and also subscribing. And all of the relevant links will be posted below. You can find me on social media at Katie Linendahl or learn more about my adventures at katielinendahl.com. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and ciao -ski.